Hey dudes, my name is Playco, and lately I've been working on my indie game, Ex Versa, which is a 2D pixel art RPG brawler game centered around time travel, developed in Game Maker Studio 2, but I'll talk more about that in another video. Because it's sort of a top-down game, I needed to develop a depth sorting system, but I wanted it to be extremely easy to use and also keep it pretty powerful. So this is what I came up with. So why do I need a depth sorting system to begin with? Well, if I have this desk object here and I place it in the room, at the top of the room, when my character runs up to it, he should be rendered in front of it, so that it seems like the desk is behind him. Which is great! And it works fine as long as I place the object behind my player to begin with. But what if the desk is in the middle of the room? Well if my player runs from below it, then the desk should be rendered behind my player. But what if my player runs from above it, downward? Well then we would want the desk to be rendered in front of the player. This is where a depth sorting system comes into play. There are a lot of ways to view this in GameMaker Studio. One simple approach would be to do something like this. A simple line of code that runs for every object. This uses every object's Y value to control the depth of that object. So any object below another object's Y value will be rendered in front of it and if it moves up above that same object, then it will be rendered behind it. So that's great, because this does exactly what we need. But the problem is that this system completely ignores all the layers in GameMaker Studio, which causes a problem if you want to have tile layers that are rendered above the player for decoration. A completely different approach would be to make an object that keeps track of all the other objects and controls the render order. That would work just fine, but it's kind of cumbersome and it complicates the development of the game in the future. I just wanted something that keeps it simple. So let's take the first approach and fix it so that it doesn't ignore the other tile layers in the room. Each tile layer has a depth value associated with it, so if we know the depth of the layer below the player and the depth of the layer above the player, then we can clamp all of our rendered objects between those values. So let's make a new function that takes in an upper depth bound and a lower depth bound. We will eventually use the depths of the layers as the input. Next we can just use the original approach for calculating a depth based on the object's y value. Bbox bottom just returns the lowest point of the object's collision box while it's in the room. We will just call this our perceived depth because we need to take this value for every object and fit all of the object's depths between the two inputs, lower depth bound and upper depth bound. To do this, we need the maximum depth and the minimum depth of all of our objects that we want to control the depth for. So here, we'll just check if this perceived depth is the minimum depth. If so, we'll set the global minimum depth for this room to be this object's bottommost y value. The reason I multiply the minimum by 1.02 is just to make sure that we'll always be greater than the lower depth bound and not equal to it. Next I just do the same thing but check if this is the global maximum depth for this room. If it is, then I set the global maximum depth to be the perceived depth, but I multiply it by 0.98, just because I always want it to be less than the upper depth bound, not equal to it, like the minimum. So sweet! We have our perceived depth, and we also know the maximum perceived depth of all of our objects, and we know the minimum for all of them too. This will allow us to do what is called normalization, or simply, we want to make all of our perceived depths for every object be a value between 0 and 1. This will be extremely useful for fitting all of the objects between the lower and the upper depth bounds. So this is a well-known concept. To normalize the depth value, we will just take the perceived depth minus the global minimum depth divided by the global maximum depth minus the global minimum depth. This will give us a depth value between 0 and 1. Finally, we want to take our normalized depth value and scale it up, so that instead of being a value between 0 and 1, it will become a value between the lower depth bound and the upper depth bound. To do this, we just find the difference between the upper and the lower depth bound. Then we multiply our normalized depth value by this difference, and then add the lower depth bound to it. Finally, we just set the object's depth value to be this scaled depth, and this function's done. Spoop! <laughs>
If the rooms for your games have the same layer structure, it's easy to just set a macro for the name of the first layer below the player and the first layer above the player. Then, for every object that needs to be depth sorted, we'll just call the function we made with the lower bound being the depth of the first layer above the player and the upper bound being the depth of the first layer below the player. To get the depth of a layer, just use the built-in function layer get depth and pass in the macros as input. Having the depth of the layer above the player be the lower bound is slightly confusing, but GameMaker Y values get larger as you go from top to bottom. All right, well, we're done. So now that we're calling our depth sorting function for our player object and the desk object in their step events, they are both rendered correctly. We also can go underneath tile layers that are rendered above the player. If you don't feel like making the function yourself, I have it on my Patreon and you can just download it. Thanks for watching, dudes, and I'll see you in the next one.